Can you just get us started? How would this work? So we reported a year ago that they were working on sort of joint financial relationship, a sort of co-branded card. So now we have many more details on this. Essentially, it's going to leverage some of the features in Apple Pay, and it's going to help consumers basically measure their earnings, track rewards, set savings goals. And it's really part of Apple's goal to expand its services revenue and grow Apple Pay, which has been very slow to take off among merchants and consumers. And from Goldman's perspective, as their bread and butter business slows, they've really been pushing it to consumer finance, and this would be the first time they've ever attempted anything like this. Yeah, and therein lies the risk, right, Selena? Because why go with Goldman? We had a great analyst on earlier saying, well, potentially that Goldman was a surprising choice from her perspective. Absolutely. Lisa Ellis earlier, I believe, on Bloomberg TV mentioned that it's sort of an odd pairing given that Synchrony Financial is really the leader in this co-branded car space. There are plenty of risks here. First of all, it's Goldman's first time. This could be a drag on Goldman's margins since they have to invest pretty heavily in these customer support call centers around the country. They also have to upgrade their systems. Uh, from Apple's perspective, they could also be potentially alienating other banks they rely on for Apple Pay transactions by aligning themselves with Goldman. So it's a pretty fine line that they have to walk. But at the end of the day, they're really hoping that they can really cross sell to each other's customers. Goldman has this great user base of uh, tech savvy, young, wealthy people who are using Marcus and Apple's hoping they can leverage those customers and vice versa. Goldman is hoping that Marcus can attract the wealthy iPhone customer. Right. Well, I mean, of course, there's a question of how much new under the sun can there be for a credit card offering? Lisa Ellis, we were talking about uh, from ne Moffitt Nathanson coming on Bloomberg Television saying she did not expect the card to attract many new customers. Let's take a listen. There are many, many, many co brands out there. Yeah. I mean, every major retailer, right? Yeah. Um, and they typically attract uh, just a very niche set of consumers that you know, deeply adores and loves and is a zealot over the Apple products, which is totally fine. But it's nothing. It's nothing new or different. I so, Selena, to that point, is there anything new and different that you've uh, divined here? I think the main part that's new and different is that this really integrates directly into the iPhone and a lot of the features work hand in hand together. So it's offering a lot of convenience for customers who already have an iPhone and may want to test out Marcus. But I think she brings up a great point that there isn't anything really new and different. It's been reported that Apple isn't planning to offer a ton of rewards and that's a big reason why some of these co-branded cards have been very successful. So it remains to be seen whether this is going to remain a niche offering for those iPhone zealots as she said, or if it's going to be a broadly successful credit card offering. Selena, briefly, we learned of this potential join up a fair few months ago, but now the onus is on, it's back in the news because it could be unleashed in a few weeks to their own employees. When could it be let out into the wild? Now, it's been reported that it will be revealed uh, to the greater consumer base later this year. But yes, it will soon be tested with employees. And uh, I, really quickly, I think it's worth mentioning that even if this is only incrementally successful, it's still good for Apple because they will probably get a bigger cut of each transaction that's done from their own credit card versus mm. uh, someone else's credit card on Apple Pay.